YouTube is it going the goat house is back on draft week with my final NFL mock draft predicting the pick for two rounds with trades here and of course there's a chance I can have a final final mock draft uh, on Thursday whether it's on here or on Twitter we live during day one of the NFL draft with my reactions our reactions to the guys joining me uh, and then we'll have winners, losers, grades videos throughout the draft, and we'll have live analysis for picks on day two and three on our Twitter. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. Hopefully you can join us, turn those notifications on. Chicago Bears will be taking Caleb Williams, so I'm going to stick with that. Obviously, you think it, I think it. We're not going to change it. going to be a complete shocker if they go elsewhere. The second pick, going to go Jaden Daniels with the Commanders. That's just where my feeling is at when it comes to me predicting what they'll do. I think they should take Drake May. I think it's a great fit. Not that Daniels isn't good and not that he's not a fit. Drake May has so much upside. Um, you know, and I think the commanders are a little focused on competing right away. Dan Quinn, Cliff Kingsbury, they know they'll have a limited amount of chances if they can't win right away. So that is another reason it, could, it will be Daniels. But there's a chance it's May. And I think it should be that this is just where what I think is going to happen here, where, where the signs are pointing towards and the third pick is where it gets interesting I almost 50 50 for me I almost put the Vikings here at three in a trade up sometimes the trades get hyped a little too much and you know and there doesn't people expect it to be every trade they talked about in the offseason it doesn't happen but there could be one here again I was 50 50 there's talks the Patriots are entertaining calls there's talks that the Vikings and even the Giants are trying to get up there and get a quarterback it could be May it could be McCarthy I really believe it's May up here um, as these teams get the sense, it, it is Daniel's going to go second, most likely. Um, you know, but it doesn't necessarily the pa mean the Patriots have to make that trade. Maybe they're just trying to see what the team is willing to give up if they go, you know, insane offer. But 50 50 call here. I really believe the Vikings come up at three and take him. But my deciding factor on that was how could the Patriots? How could you? You have a legit upside prospect like an elite quarterback prospect upside through the roof how could you pass on that when you're kind of an upside team um, so that is my deciding factor there but I really think he may will be in this scenario Daniels goes to may will be the third pick so that number and that prospect I think will be right I think and the Giants have some sort of chance but I really think it's pretty close to 50 50 with the Patriots in the Vikings here with Drake may at three but that is one we're all watching for a lot of talk about the Cardinals trading back and they, if they were to do so the reports are legit reports that they would do it while they're on the clock seeing the scenario I guess that makes sense but man what doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me is just trading completely back and away from getting an elite receiver but specifically Marvin Harrison Jr. I know there's three legit receivers that are pretty close in grade but the more and more I think about it I mean I've always had Marvin Harrison Jr. number one a lot of you have as well but the more I think about it getting closer to draft it's like yeah there's three elite guys but man this is the guy this is the sure thing elite guy how could you not take him if you're the Cardinals so Got to go with that at four. I just don't think they can really pass on an elite receiver, but specific, specifically Marvin Harrison Jr. But, um, you know, at this time, we weren't really sure what the Cardinals were going to do last year. They end up doing a little something a little surprising, but I think it's a little different of a situation. We will see. Uh, pick five is another spot where it gets interesting. The Chargers could very well trade down, but again, I'm starting to believe, like, there could be trades. Three, four, five, around that range could be trades. We're going to have trades in this mock, but... Starting to believe, like, or remember every year, it's like this trade's hyped up, this trade's hyped up, this one, and only a handful or a couple happen. Um, it could be that same case here. But I've been, I've either had the Chargers trading back and targeting, I had them both times, I had them trading back, targeting JC Latham, which could be the case. They could surprise a lot of people, take them at five, not fully counting on it, as you can tell. But, or they can trade back and get them. Uh, but whenever I had them sticking at five, staying at five, I've had them taking a receiver because kind of like the Cardinals and the Patriots explanation had, like, how could you not take one of these elite receivers for Justin Herbert when you have no good receivers really on? I mean, Josh Palmer's pretty solid, uh, but you don't really have legit receivers on your team. Like, how, how could you? But, you know, so I wasn't really buying in the offensive line hype, but now I'm kind of getting there. It's, it's signs are pointing them towards them. They could take a receiver, but trading back or staying put and taking that lineman, they've been linked to Joe Alt. And now we're hearing team, there's a team or there's teams that really like the idea of putting Joe Alt at right tackle. And before, even though there was talk about Alt or an offense line for the Chargers, it was like, well, he's a left tackle. I know he probably can play, play right, but they need a right unless they're moving Slater there. You know, but now it's kind of, we kind of can link all those things together. 
and Joe Alt could very well be the pick to like load up on that offense line for Justin Herbert, and they would probably play him at right tackle. So I'm going to hate myself if they just stay put at five and take a receiver because that's kind of what I've been believing if they don't trade down the whole time. That's kind of that's kind of what I would do, even though I love Joe Alt. Definitely love him, one of my top players in the draft, but these receivers are higher on the board, and you need one very badly. And I think the offense line solid besides one spot. But I'm starting to believe the potential smoke here that they just complete that offensive line for Justin Herbert first, which does kind of make sense. Uh, you know, And they put Joe all at right tackle, but we'll see. Could somebody move to five? The Vikings, if they can't get the three, do they move to five and Mays off the board to go for McCarthy? It's a possibility as well. Um, number six, the Giants go Rome Adunze over Malik Neighbors and J.J. McCarthy, who are also realistic options. The Giants are rumored to be looking to trade up the three to take Drake May. I would love Drake May for them. I love Drake May for anybody because I think highly of him. I think he's a good fit in Dayball's offense. Uh, but I, I, I think that's being blown up a little too much. They kind of left this spot open, the receiver spot, and they're trying to bait teams to take quarterbacks so a receiver drops to them. Uh, so I'm thinking receiver. I've been thinking that for a long time here. Um, you know, do they go a Dunze or Neighbors? And and I think the most common pick for a lot of people out there for, for this spot uh, would be Neighbors. I'm feeling a Dunze. I think a Dunze is the right pick. Um, not that one. One's not necessarily wrong. Like picking Neighbors isn't like that's wrong. Like, no, not the case. But they need that legit outside receiver. I think it's a perfect fit. Exactly what they haven't had. Exactly what they're looking for. There's something that popped up today that there's a little bit of a shoulder issue for Malik Neighbors. He's so good, and it's such a minor thing that it didn't pop up during the year that it's really not going to affect his draft stock. But could that be a deciding factor as well? Um, but I like Adunze on the outside for them. You know, Wandale Robinson's really solid for the slot for them. And Neighbors could play both. They can make both work. But I'm going to go Adunze over Neighbors here with my prediction for the Giants at 6 uh, and then at seven, things kind of get interesting. I feel like I've either had the Titans taking Joe Alt or J.C. Latham, and those are both very, very realistic options. But in this scenario where I'm kind of falling for it maybe with, the, with Alt going five to the Chargers, he's off the board, and I don't think they'd be able to pass on Malik Neighbors. I mean, their, their receiver room would be, abs I mean, incredibly loaded with – Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Malik Neighbors, but Brian Callahan had that situation in Cincinnati. He's going to value the receiver position, something the Titans haven't done, and now they're getting ready to do. Uh, but also, De <clears throat> DeAndre Hopkins has one year left on his deal, so at, you know, at this time next year, it's going to be like, all right, we got Calvin Ridley, we got Burks if he turned out for some reason, or if he stayed healthy, but and it's a very important spot. So uh, if Neighbors is there, which it, he could go, he could go forward to the Cardinals. I'm not counting on it, but he could go up there. I think this is probably the latest he goes, unless that <clears throat> reported shoulder situation, which which actually uh, a fact that some teams have that on him. If that's more of a concern, um, could he drop a little bit more? I guess, but I, I'm not really seeing. It. I think this is kind of the floor for him. I think they'll be very very high on him and all, and I do think they'll like Latham. But every time I mention Latham, Titans fans kind of lose their shit. Uh, I just I think he's better than what fans think. And I think it's a fit, but they are looking for more of a left tackle, perhaps. They kind of just need tackles in general. There's nothing set at either spot. Uh, and they are a sneaky trade-back candidate, especially if Alt's gone. But how could you – what if Alt neighbors are gone? Do you trade back a little bit for Latham? Because uh, they actually don't have a long list of picks. They've used those picks to for, for past trades. Levis is kind of where it started, to make, making a move for him in the second round. So, um this is something I really haven't had, but here we go. Neighbors, I, I don't think they could pass on him. I think it's a really good fit for what that what that offense, what they're trying to do. Uh, pick eight. So I'm not really following the buzz on this one because the buzz says Dallas Turner, and I think they should pick Turner, but not that there's like other options are wrong necessarily. But Turner and even Byron Murphy has been getting some buzz. I mean, he's been my number one defensive player for a long time, and finally everyone you know, started to realize. And now people are saying that he's going to be maybe the first offensive player taken, um, you know, and it could be right here. I think that's more so saying like people hearing from teams that he's legit. You're too low on him. He Murphy could be the first defense, defensive, the best defensive player in the draft. And people going, well, where's the first defensive player going to go? Probably eight to the Falcons. So maybe I think it's more of that. You know, so I, you know they have plenty of interior defensive linemen, but if Murphy's their best player on their board, they very well could take him. I, I think it's between they could trade back to. There's rumors about quarterback. Ah, it's smoke. 
it's if they if they spent 180 million on Kirk and take a quarterback at eight, um, they valued quarterback. They valued the position more, way more than anyone's ever valued the position. Like, and it kind of contradicts things, like the signing of Kirk Cousins. I don't know. I'm gonna go a little bold. It's not super bold, but I think it's it's you know not what people are talking about right now. And I'm gonna go Quinion Mitchell. I had this last time as well. A um, lot of hype around him. The worry is he didn't press a ton, 20, 20 snaps and press. So that's kind of my issue as well. But I think he's very good, very good playmaker. Really good zone corner, so fits Raheem Morris's cover four scheme. There'll be a lot of cover three as well. So the view it is a fit. Pair him with A.J. Terrell. Terrell's contract isn't super lengthy anymore. They could always bring him back. But um, teams are trying to form that elite corner duo, kind of like what the Chiefs had. So that'll be my pick for the Bears at nine. Uh, legit trade back Canada. Yeah, so you see the tough part about this is I didn't have a trade yet, even though I said th- watch out for three, watch out here and there in this spot. But uh, the trades are coming here, and most likely there'll be a trade. Again, that 50-50 on that three spot. But you start predicting all these trades, you kind of make a mess here. Um, but I'm going to go Byron Murphy for, for the Bears here. He's supposed to be one of the best – or I think he is the best defensive player in the draft – uh, but he's supposed to be one of the first defensive players off the board. Uh, I think really good for Eberflus's defense. Uh, you know, you know, pair him on the inside with that solid D line. Uh, you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. And again, rumors that he could be the first defensive player off the board. So that means he kind of should go earlier, even though I already thought that. But again, I think the Falcons look elsewhere, so it kind of leaves you know the Bears uh, making sense here. But again, could trade back a little bit uh, because they could use some more picks. I live in Chicago, so I'm hearing like rumors on the radio and you know people around that they're going to trade up and get a receiver. I'm not really counting on that, but with all the talk about teams wanting to trade back around there, that range, we're going to take a receiver. You know, maybe, but um, right now I got Murphy at nine for the Bears. For the Jets, I'm going to go J.C. Latham, a guy. I really think he's going to go earlier than what fans think. Fans kind of view him as like a mid to late first guy. Um, I think you know the Chargers could take him, the Titans could take him, whether it's a trade back or, or not, or staying put. Uh, I really don't think he gets by this point, but again, I could see the Jets really liking Taliese Fuaga. Uh, but I'll go Latham, a guy that played guard early in his career, but he looked he's a legit tackle. I don't want to put him at guard because he's a legit tackle. He's good. He's underrated, I guess. Somehow, somehow he's underrated. Um, but very important to the Jets because they have durability concerns, they have aging concerns, I guess, at their tackle spots. So uh, I, I. I Brock Bowers has been mocked here by myself included. I really am feeling it being one of the offensive linemen here. And then 11, the Vikings, again, was very, very close to have them trading up to three. I thought about it with the Chargers going to five, but I think it's been, could be wrong, but I think the McCarthy thing's been blown up a little bit. Again, I think they like McCarthy. They've came out and said they like multiple quarterbacks in this class, and I have them taking McCarthy 11, but I think everyone's kind of assumed that they're going to trade up and take McCarthy, and again, it could happen. Um, we can't guarantee anything when it comes to the draft. That's what makes it so beautiful, so fun. Uh, but I think just because like there's a connection there, and he loved, you know, he loved his interview with that team, and they need a quarterback, and he's you know a big fan of Jefferson, whatever. That kind of got hyped up a little too much, and people automatically assume they're going to trade up for him. And again, they could, but I really, 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 really believe their main goal is to go up to three and take Drake May. And if somehow he's if they didn't do that and he's on the board still after three, then their goal is to trade up to four or five and take Drake May. That I am firmly believing that is what their goal is. It does not mean they don't like McCarthy, but I, I it just makes a lot of sense. Like if they miss on that May trade up, the next option is hey McCarthy could be here at eleven. Um, you know what, what what's uh, you know try to I really think he could be here at eleven. Unless the Giants take him, I really think that's the only worry. I really don't think the Broncos are going to hop him. Sometimes you got to gamble a little bit, but um, my feeling is move up for May or stay put and maybe cross your fingers a little bit. I don't think it's going to take too much to get J.J. McCarthy, but again, they could trade up. Um, they, hell, they could take McCarthy over May at three. I'm not counting on that, but they could if they trade there, but they could trade up to four or five. Or um, Again, I said the Titans could trade back a little bit. Do they go to seven for McCarthy? Definitely could see that. Definitely could see it. But this is where I'm at right now. I think the trades are being a little hyped up, but again, I'm 50, 50 with that third pick 12. Here's a trade that I really, really, really like the Eagles trading up for Dallas Turner as he is available at 12. Again, he could be off the board at eight. 
that would kind of stop this. That they could still turn up the 12 and get a, another Alabama player in Terry and Arnold. I definitely think that's possible. But with Turner available here at 12 and the Broncos needing picks, they, they need some picks, um, especially like that day two range. Um, so they swap 12 for 22, a pretty big drop off, and they get 50 in 161. Uh, the Eagles trade up. It's what they do. They go get the player they want. They go get the big time players that are supposed to be big time with upside, former top recruits that played at big schools. Um, felt like in the past years, every time I had the Eagles like mock trading up, the fans were like, "There's no way they trade up," and then they and they make a trade. Then, so um, I think this is very realistic. If turn, that's the big if. If Turner's here again, he should go eight. But Willie, right now, I don't get that feeling that he will. But there is some sort of percentage chance. Eagle, I mean, great fit for Vic Fangio's defense. They love adding more pass rushers. You know, they love having pass rushers. Obviously, I don't think Sweat's going to be there after this year. Brandon Graham. Um, Nolan Smith, to me, is not like an every-down guy, but he has a lot of upside. Um, they have Bryce Huff, who actually wasn't an every-down guy for the Jets. I will think he will be with the Eagles. Uh, but you get a big-time guy here with Turner. Apparently, there's some teams that believe he has more upside than Will Anderson, his former teammate. It's a, it's a little much for me, but I, I upside-wise, I, I could I could see it. Um, so this is a total Eagles move. I love this trade. It's probably my favorite mock trade of this offseason, but again, Turner has to be there. And then 13, the Raiders go Alu Fashionu. He's tough to mock, mainly because my thoughts on him, I think people are too high on him for sure. I think he's more of like a mid first at the earliest, uh, at the earliest. Um, so I would prefer many other options here for the Raiders, but he's going to go around this range. It could be Terry and Arnold again. It could be one of the other offensive tackles. Um, it just really sounds, I think people are split on him. There's going to be teams that have a number two tackle. I'm surprised about that, but it's what it's, what it's going to be. I mean, we're not, I'm not going to be in agreement with every single team. And there's some teams that are going to be like me. They're going to have them a little bit down there. So chances are he probably goes around this range. Um, Raiders always make some interesting picks. This probably wouldn't be interesting to a lot of people. It would to me, even though I'm predicting it, but that would be the route they go. Some buzz about taking a quarterback here. I don't see it. I think they're interested in Jaden Daniels. He would need to drop a little bit for them to go up and make a move. 14, the Saints, Taliese, Fuaga. I believe this is their target. I strongly believe this is their target. Uh, they could blow up right in my face. Doesn't mean they get them, actually. Even if you know everyone has a target they don't get. But, of course, like they could go. I think Alt is everybody that needs a tackle, that target. I think they can go up and get him. So, not saying they prefer Fuaga over a guy like Joe Alt. But, they actually could move up a little bit for Fuaga. Or they can stay put at 14 if they feel like he's going to be there. I just think, I feel like he's their guy. Um, so, they can play him at right tackle or left if they need him to. Obviously, has upside besides in the guard. But, they would play him at tackle. So, uh, could go that route. I think... Uh, if they want to surprise some people with Byron Murphy still here, then they can definitely go that route. Uh, but 15, the Colts go Brock Bowers. It just feels like the floor for Brock Bowers. You can't have him go any lower than this. Uh, he could go, I mean, he can go to, the, it's a surprise, but he can go to like the Chargers in a trade down or like a surprise with the Titans at seven, the Giants at six. Like I wouldn't be completely floored. It's just not likely, um, you know, but then you let the Broncos stay put, you know, maybe, the Colts, it's such a perfect fit that they can move up for them, and they may have to. But again, this scenario, I have them dropping. So I uh, had Bowers to the Colts. This is where will teams value the tight end position. 16, this is another surprise I have. And the more and more I think about this, and no one's talking about it, but the more and more I think about it, I'm like, this is a Seahawks pick. This is a Seahawks, and this is a Mike McDonald pick as well. The Seahawks always have surprise picks. They make surprise picks like crazy. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll, they have to make a surprise pick. But, well, I, I think Fatanu from Washington could be a legit option. There is some concern about his knee long term. Not really right now, but that's kind of coming out recently as well. So it's really going to depend on their medicals on, on Troy Fatanu, who has some familiar coaching faces on that, that staff, and they could use and they could use him at guard. But he did play tackle for that Washington staff. Um, but they actually need a DB more than people talk about. Uh, you know, they... Uh, Tariq Willen took a step down last year. I'm not really worried about him, though. I like him. I think he'll start at outside corner. Uh, and you know, and then you, and obviously your number one is Devin Witherspoon, but he actually spent actually a little bit over 50% of his snaps in the slot. They kind of use him where they need him more. The slot posi slot positions becoming more and more valuable, more important, I should say. Uh, but he's both outside and inside, so they can use a versatile guy here. Uh, Cooper DeGene is known as an outside corner. I think he could play better inside and even at safety. And the Seahawks definitely could use him there as well. And Mike McDonald, you know, what he did with Kyle Hamilton, who lines up everywhere. But 
Um, you know, and Geno Stone, who what he did with him, who's a former Iowa, you know, zone coverage guru there, uh, or you know, coming from that school, it kind of makes some sense here. So they can use him at outside when Witherspoon's inside. They use him inside when he's outside. They can use him at safety at times. I like the fit a lot. Um, you know, they met with them too, which some teams don't draft guys. They, they met with, it's kind of meet with the guys with injury concern or so it could be that, but the Seahawks tend to meet with some of the guys they take, but, um, I, I just see it. I can feel it right now. It is definitely, I'm aware it's bold. Bold things will happen in the NFL draft. 17 is kind of a perfect scenario, dream scenario for the Jaguars. I had Terry and Arnold slipping through a little bit. He can go to the Raiders up at 13. I had the Eagles trading up to 12. They could trade up for Terry and Arnold, and they're more likely for one of those pass rushers maybe. Um, and then I had Cooper DeJean go ahead of Arnold, which is bold, and I even agree. It's but like it's like Arnold should go ahead of him, but um, it's what happens. You know, stuff happens. So I think if Arnold's on the board at 17, that the Jags run the podium, that's who they take. We'll see if it happens. Again, he has some scenarios we can go earlier. Uh, 18, Troy Fatanu from Washington, who I love. I love his game. I love his upside at guard, even though I would prefer to keep Matt Tackle because, you know, he's been great out there. Um, some medical concerns are popping up. Some teams have flagged him. They said his knee didn't fully check out. Like, there's some wear on it. Like, he's going to be good to go week one. They just worry about him long term. And that's when you're drafting a guy in a first round at a premium position. Like, it's a franchise player. It, you know, so some teams may not take him. And he is worthy of a pick close to that top 10 range. So he's pretty rangy right now. He can go up to the Jets at 10. He can go uh, Saints, Raiders around that range. Uh, I don't want to say this is his floor because you factor in the injury. Some teams have an injury concern. He can go the Rams next pick at 19. Actually like that fit a lot. Or uh, the Steelers. I say Steelers at 20 is probably his floor, but... You could say this could be his floor here. I think if he's there, the Bengals got to pounce on that, um, you know, and get an offensive lineman there. And then just the only question is, you know, you played left. Where would you play him? This I'm talking about playing guard. You know, you can you can definitely play him at right. I don't see why not. Uh, and I know they have Trent Brown, but he's only been good in New England. He has major injury concern, durability concerns as well. So it's too good of a player maybe to pass here. And then 19, the Rams. I am feeling offensive tackle for them. If Fatanu was there, I'd have them take him. I Who I really thought about in this spot was Jordan Morgan. And that would seem pretty damn early. But I really consider, I think he can go a little earlier than people think. But, man, Jerzon Newton sitting here. And there's some talks about him possibly sliding. But such a big-time playmaker from the interior. And the Rams trying to do their be- the best they can to get some interior uh, uh, presence in there with losing Aaron Donald. So um, that's what I went with. But it was going into this mock, I was really thinking offensive tackle. So it just really depends on how the board falls. 20, the Seahawks go Graham Barton. I've mocked this before. I'm going to stick with it. Really feel like they're going to be interested in him. And they'd be interested in Fatanu if he's there. And then JPP, Jackson Powers, or JPJ, she's a Jack, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson has been um, mocked to them. Uh, a bit. I think they need more interest in Barton. He actually go, or he's one that we've heard to watch out for going even earlier than you think. So it'd be earlier in this. Could the Bengals take him? Uh, perhaps, but got a feeling the Steelers really like him. So we will see, but they could surprise some people. Of course, anybody can surprise anybody. Uh, 21. I have a trade that makes a lot of sense to me. The Cardinals going up with the Dolphins. The Dolphins definitely need some picks, especially like looking around that day two range. Um, you know, so they're going to swap 21, 27. The Dolphins are going to get 90 as well. Uh, and the Cardinals go up and get their pass rusher in Jared Verse. He's pretty rangy as well. He can go as high as nine of the Bears. I would not recommend that. I think that's too early. But he could go up there. Would not completely shock me. Um, and he can go anywhere in between. But and the pass rusher's dropping a little bit. Um, you know, because he is kind of needs a scheme fit and he is a little stiff. Uh, relies on the bull rush, bull rush a little bit. Would like him for Gannon's defense. They they go up, make sure they get him. And it could be Latu. This could be Latu. What with verse here. Uh, and then the member of the Broncos I had, I love that trade. Trading with the Eagles. So they go back to 22. And I had them taking Latu, Latu from UCLA. He was a big-time production machine. It's a pass rush, edge rush position. Um, and they... There's been talks about them taking them taking him at 12. I'm not really counting on that. It's a concern up there because the medicals for him, and that's reports that, I mean, it's reports coming out now. We knew about it. You know, a neck injury that resulted in him medically retiring at Washington. He's been fine the past couple of years, so we'll stay optimistic. But that's a legitimate concern, kind of reminding you of Leighton Vander Esch, um, 
you know, it was a surprise where he was taken because of that, and then he had the injury pop up, and now he had to retire early. So it's a little scary. Like one pop, and you need surgery there, and he's not the same player. Or is he, his career's over because he had the issue before. So do you take a? Ch- he's such a good player that you take a chance on the first round. But do you? Just, some teams have completely moved him off the board. Removed. They flagged him completely. So uh, it's a little tricky. But I think that the Broncos move down. They'd feel good about that getting him. Um, and the Broncos need some picks. They made a move for Zach Wilson just a little bit ago. They had some new jerseys come out today, too, which people are ripping, it seems like. Um, but they they gained 50, pick 50 and 161, so a pretty good uh, deal for them there, and they get a lot to at 22. So I have the Vikings keeping their pick. Again, I'm 50-50 on them going up to three or just going up at all uh, in general, but I think it's really for Drake May. And if he's off the board, it's like, do we move up? But if the Vikings have this pick, I do like Kool-Aid McKinstry for them. Uh, Cause he's a good corner, but he's pretty scheme versatile. Like he can press, he can play off. He can play man. He can play zone. Um, he's very smart where I specifically like him is as a press cover two. like the best cover two corners are smart and they can press. They can make the offense think they're in man. Um, Brian Flores in the past ran a lot of man press uh, likes his corners to press last year. They ran as much cover two as anybody. So I think it'd be a really good fit. It's just, will they have this pick? Will they have it? That's the tough part here. Vikings make this year's mocking very, very tough. Uh, they very well could trade up, and they probably wouldn't have this pick if that's the case. 24, we have another trade. We actually have an in-division trade, which actually happens throughout the draft a little more often than um, – it happens a little bit more now than, than back in the day. Um, so I don't think there would be any issue with the Commanders and the Cowboys making a deal, and this actually made sense. Like with this range, the, the Commanders want to come up and get an offensive tackle. A lot of people are expecting them to do that. They have a haul of picks – uh, and they badly need a starting offense lineman. And the Cowboys badly need a starting offense lineman. I almost had them staying put and taking Morgan. But there's a player for the Cowboys that I know that they like, they are intrigued by, that would be a fit, fills a need. And there's a lot, a lot of buzz about that player going way earlier than you think, even in the first round. I think you could trade back 36 and get him. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, it kind of made sense for both sides. They get 36 and they get 67, which actually is pretty good value for the Cowboys. Commanders get 24. They go up and get a tackle. I thought about Tyler Guyton here, but went with Jordan Morgan. The Commanders, if they take Daniels, or if they take May, but we had them taking Daniels. And with Cliff Kingsbury, they want to pass, pass, and pass the ball. They want to pass the Eckler, even they're running back there. They're going to run the ball, but they want to pass. And they need a pass-protecting tackle. Jordan Morgan is a really good pass-protecting tackle. He could be better against the, you know with the run, I should say. And he's not the lengthiest guy in the world, so that's kind of what's going against him. But he's a really good pass-protecting left tackle. Good fit. For the Commanders. 25, the Packers take Nate, Nate Wiggins. Last time I had him taking a surprise in Max Melton. I can definitely see that happening still. I love Max Melton. I actually like him a little bit better than Nate Wiggins. That's a little bold. I do like Wiggins. He's good. It would not be a bad pick. Uh, but I think they can look at corner. I really don't see. I could be wrong. But there's a lot of talk about tackle. I, they signed Andre Diller, who's a backup. But, you know, the Packers coach so well. If he has to play, it could be pretty solid. I like the way their young tackle duo played down the stretch last year. I don't know. I, if they need an offensive lineman, I think they could upgrade at right guard, but we'll see. Um, so I look at corner here, and uh, I see Nate Wiggins, his ability to play man and zone, you know, cover three, I think he'd be really good at, and they could fit what the Packers are trying to do. 26, the Bucks take Jackson Powers Johnson, which I thought about Chop Robinson here, and I do like JPJ. I think he could be a really good player for a long time. I would take Chop. I would love him as like a Shaq Barrett replacement, but – um, so teams are going to be mixed on him. I think in this case, they would take JPJ. I definitely think he goes first. There's a lot of talk about him slipping out. I think that's what I really think that's because people mocking, they see all these players rising, all these receivers, these corners, these tackles, they're rising up the boards and they feel like they, they're, they're more of a flashy player. They have to, they have to mock them there and they forget about the non-premium position, the center, the center position. And that always been my take. Like how, uh, how high do you take a center? You do have a good one here, but I still think he goes first. Like he can go. 16 to the Seahawks. He can go to Steelers. He can go number of teams here. He can go to the Bills if he drops there. But I'll go with JPJ to the Buccaneers here at 26. And then 27, we have that trade. And I'm a little bit of a surprise here with the Dolphins going back. They could go offensive lineman. They could go interior defensive line. Uh, but go Xavier Worthy. They love speed. They love adding more and more speed. Um, you know, and then Jalen Waddles dealt with injuries. Tyree Kill as well. I'm not really worried about his durability though. Um, Waddle's dealt with injuries, and when they're missing one of those guys, it's like night and day difference. Like that—that's—that's that's what makes that offense. 
the speed elite players that they have, like you know, at those positions. Um, and then Tyree Kill has kind of made it clear that he's like he's not going to be around forever. Like he might be an early retirement candidate too. And then you have another similar there's no Tyree Kill, but a similar style player here, big playability, freakish speed. The Dolphins love. They made it a point to get more and more speed every year. They had H and last year, so I could definitely see this. Like they're. You know they're they're gonna be unique. They're gonna win in different ways. They want to win in different ways here. How to build this team? This is kind of their approach. So um, get an extra pick that they badly need, and then they take Worthy. I can see it. Kind of going back to the combine after he ran that forty. It was like reported by Rapport that hey, like not just because how fast he is. Like teams aren't teams aren't surprised that he ran that fast. Um, they knew it on tape, and they know he's an explosive good player. Like he kind of already was receiver four for some teams going into the combine and that's kind of been swept under the rug you forget about it and a lot of time during the draft like you kind of got to go back around that range and when after you see what happens in the draft they go okay that was true the latest stuff was smoke so he could go a little earlier than people are expecting right now or he could go in the second round it's definitely possible um so that's what i have for the dolphins on the trade back and then the bills go up brian thomas jr it's like too, it's so perfect. It makes so much. It's like too obvious that I can honestly see the Bills not doing it. Like Brian Thomas Jr. is there, and something popped up about his shoulder too. Him and his teammate Malik Neighbors, like their shoulders aren't 100, percent but very minor. Um, so that was weird that I read that today. All the other medical things that were reported that I already kind of knew about, those were surprising. Like, did they even know they were injured? Like, so I don't know. So could he slip through a little bit? He's not going to be for everyone. He's an outside receiver. You kind of put him on one side. And he goes to work, and boy, does he go to work, though, out there. It's just so perfect for the Bills. But my gut is almost telling me they do something surprising, whether it's a trade, a big trade up is could be it. But more so, uh, do they not, do they take, they pass on one of these great receivers, which everyone's expecting them to take a receiver. Do they pass and go for a pass rusher like Darius Robinson or Mar- Marshawn Neyland, um, you know, or do they go with a defensive back, like a surprising pick there? I all, Going into this mock, you know, I'm kind of lately. I'm kind of feeling Troy Franklin could go in the first round because his negatives, his highs are super high, his lows are a little low. But I mean, the highs are super high, and it's like Chris Olave, maybe a Stephon Diggs type player, big playability. Like the downfield tracking is absurd, and that's a really good fit with Josh Allen. So going to this mock, I was like, I might have the Bills taking Troy Franklin and just surprising people. But what could they possibly take Franklin? over Brian Thomas Jr. and A.D. Mitchell. Could they possibly do it? They could. Just something's telling me the Bills might do something surprising. But, uh, man, if Brian Thomas Jr. is there, you, you got to do it. You have to do it. Uh, and then the Lions take Chop Robinson, which I think he should go a lot earlier. But I think teams are going to be mixed on him because he doesn't have the full production yet. And he's not – does he have the full play strength yet? Uh, but he's explosive. He's gonna be. He's got so much upside. I think he's gonna be a much better NFL player, and he made it more of an impact in the stats show. Uh, but too good to pass on here. Really good fit. Gonna be dominant in the Lions defense. It's a Brad Holmes type pick here. He seems to take guys that I really like. So we kind of got similar eyes, set of eyes maybe. So uh, even though I wasn't, I didn't like the Jack Campbell one. That was uh, completely out of left field. Um, but. I could see this. I can definitely see this here if he's here. I could also see a trade back in the early second, get even more picks. Not that I'm counting on that. Uh, 30, the Ravens take Amarius Mims. I've had this before. Uh, you know, the, he's the ideal tackle in terms of traits, and he's pretty good for limited, and he was a good recruit, but pretty good for limited experience, and he fits Todd Monk. He's played under Todd Monk, and he fits fits that offense. Uh, but he does have some injury concern as well. He was injured during this year. He got injured at the combine, so it's a little risky. Insane upside, but very risky. Uh, I think people are fully expecting offense line or receiver. Definitely could see it. Watch out for edge too. A uh, guy like Neyland possibly. Um, but going to go at Mims to the Ravens at 30. 31, there's Max Melton. I've been mocking this as well recently. It's one of my guys with the draft. I just got, and it's bold. He very well might not go first. People are probably going to rip me for it again, but I just got a feeling. Like, to me, he's an insanely good, high upside corner. He has more length, which is very important, than all the other top corners. Um, freak athlete, zone, man, inside, outside, press off. I love his press ability. The way he presses even from the slot is just like, I think he's a unique, unique player. So uh, there's a ton of fits I like for him. There's 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 fits where it's probably too early, like the Bengals. 
Uh, the Eagles, probably not going to go that early. Those are good fits. But uh, Packers, Lions, Niners, Chiefs, some really good fits here for Max Melton. I'm just going to ride with my bold prediction. You got you to gotta try to be bold here and there because a lot it's, it's just the NFL draft. Come on. So Max Melton and the Niners. And they actually met with him a couple times, if I'm not mistaken. So that was interesting. 32, the Chiefs get Adam A. Mitchell. It'll be a total thing for the Chiefs to get kind of a steal here. But, um, yeah, there's some reports that some teams are a little concerned because he is he is diabetic. Um, does that really affect your on-the-field play? I'd, I'd argue, I mean, I guess only a diabetic person would know, but I would argue not. no, not really. Uh, Mark Andrews is diabetic, and, um, you know, he's a star tight end for the Ravens, obviously. And... But I guess I can understand it. If some teams are a little concerned and then you combine with that with his limited effort plays. But he's a big-time receiver. When the game's on the line, you can go to him. He's uh, sneaky good running his routes. He's a really good athlete. He ran NFL routes in college. Unlike, you know, you could say the opposite for Xavier Worthy. He was kind of limited. But for Mitchell, he had an NFL route tree. So I do like that. So Chiefs definitely could use a receiver. Rasheed Rice is going to get suspended. Is this necessarily like a Rasheed Rice replacement? It's a different style player. So could they be looking for more of that specific type of player? Um, I think it's just too good to pass here. And you see a recap of my first round. Uh, now we take a look at my second round here. I'm going to point out some. Panthers, it was a 50-50 call for me with Leggett and Franklin. Uh, I think Franklin could sneak in the first. The deciding factor is Panthers have met with Leggett several times, and that could be just like to throw other teams off, but we'll go with that. Franklin for the Patriots. Christian Haynes, who I really like, um, a guard for the Cardinals. Cowboys is a big one for the second round. They take Patrick Paul, the Houston tackle. I would not be completely floored if they took him at 24. Now, it seems really, really early, but it's a good fit. I feel like the Cowboys like him. It's a sense I get. Um, it just seems like a Tyrone Smith replacement at left tackle, like big, physical, long. Um, he's a, there's been report. I, I know I felt like I have that in my video. Like I, I put Patrick Paul in that video of like he could surprisingly go first, just because he's got good experience. He's physical as shit, and he's long. He's long as shit. I'm like teams like these types of guys. And then there was reports coming out that watch out for him to go earlier than you think. And then you got Patrick Paul himself talking about like, Hey, I'm going to go first round. That doesn't mean a whole lot, but teams are telling me I'm going to go first. And again, that still doesn't mean a whole lot, but um, I think it could happen, but is a good scenario here where the Cowboys actually can move back and they badly need picks. They really, you know, usually for the Cowboys uh, or for teams, like if they don't have a busy free agency and they need to fill a lot of roster spots they need more players they need to get their additions to the draft you trade back you gain more picks actually ends up being cheaper while you get more players so teams do it all the time so it makes sense to me chargers get the receiver down here at roman wilson michigan guy harbaugh guy tyler guyton could very easily go first uh could go earlier in this he fell right to the titans that'd be a really good Spot with uh, Callahan, offensive line coach there. Rake Straw for the Panthers. They get a pretty good haul here in the second round. Darius Robinson is a tough one to mock, too. Like, to me, all day is a first-round player uh, because he's unique. He's lacking that closing speed, but he's so physical. He's long. He's powerful. He's versatile. Like, he can go – he's the guy that can go earlier than we all expect. Like, I mocked him at 40, but if he ends up going in the middle of the first round, I'm like, I could have saw this coming. I just didn't mock it this last time. Um so he's tough. I don't think he gets by this point. Edger and Cooper for the Packers, a guy that could be sneaky in the first round as well. They could use linebacker. Braden Fisk, I feel like I mock all the time for the Texans. Could see that. Marshawn Neeland, another guy to watch out for in the first. Um, honestly, if the Vikings keep that 23rd pick, they could be a spot. Uh, Bills, Lions, Ravens, Niners. I don't think he gets by this point. He probably ends up going earlier in this, but the Falcons get that, get him there. Michael Penix, there's a lot of people that firmly believe he's going to be a first round, not only a first round pick, but go earlier. I don't know. There's some teams that just don't like his play in general. There's some teams that are like he's 24. There's some teams that are like he had his, he had several injuries, um, you know, and the system he came from. Like, so I think there's more than not teams that view him as a second round guy. Lad McConkey, um, reports came out today. It's nothing new, but he, he's been medically flagged by teams because he was injured last year. He had a back and an ankle injury. He's a little undersized. He kind of runs in the contact sometimes. So really good player, possibly worthy of a late first. But I think that, you know, with how good the other receivers are and the upside that they have, and then he has like a little bit of a undersized and injury concern, I think he could slip a little bit. I don't know if the Saints would pass on him. Um, here's the issue with the Colts. Uh, you know, definitely need a corner. 
I just don't love the fits here, you know, for them. Um, you know, I don't like Tampa is my next best corner, but I don't love the fit there. I like, he needs a cover, a cover two team for me, but, uh, Adisa Isaac's a pretty damn good pass rusher they could use there. And then TJ Tampa for the Giants, uh, which Giants, you know, they ran a lot of man coverage before, but Shane Bowen, now their defensive coordinator, I think we'll see. I mean, I think we'll see a mixture of stuff. Cover four, cover two, and, and man. Malachi Corley for the Jags could use a receiver. I think Doug Peterson could have some fun with him. Uh, Chris Jenkins for the Bengals needs some help stopping the run. The Broncos get Bo Nix. He's been linked there a lot. I, I think they can get him in the second round. And they, it's kind of like, I think we're going to be going at like, if he gets picked up by the Broncos in the spot, we're going to be going, okay, yeah, we kind of knew the people that think that, that they might take him in the first round. I mean, we kind of knew he's going to go there. I guess we should have thought about this scenario. Mikey Sainer still, which is like an A-plus scenario for the Steelers here uh, because he's a, he's very good. He's a really good slot corner. I think it's a really good fit there. Kingsley Sua Mataya for the Rams. They get their tackle. Zach Frazier for the Eagles. Guy that could play, possibly play center. I like the fit of Mason Smith for the Browns. High upside interior defensive lineman. Love the fit of Brandon Doris for the Dolphins. I think he could be a Justin Matabuke type player, which Anthony Weaver coached, their new defensive coordinator coach, Baltimore. Jonathan Brooks for the Cowboys. Uh, clearly the best runner in the class for me. He did tear his ACL in, in November, which made it com- kind of a conversation for people. Uh, you know, throughout this process of who the best running back is. But to me, he's the best running back. Christian Mahogany, I think people are sleeping on. Could be a second-round pick. I like the fit for the Packers at right guard. Dominic Pooney, love the fit for the Texans as well. Could start at guard if they need him to. Or he can be a very high-end backup at guard or tackle because he played tackle very well for them this year. And they have some injuries pop up. Uh, the Bills get Tyler Newbin, who could be a split safety. Uh, Andrew Phillips for the Lions. He's been getting some buzz. I'd prefer him in the slot. But I think a lot of teams will like him outside. I'm not totally against him out on the outside. Kind of fits the Lions' motto of just a you know a dude like a physical guy that gets downhill as a corner. Ravens get a really solid slot receiver and Ricky Pearsall. Problem is, a Flowers plays a lot from the slot, but it's kind of the Ravens' type. Uh, Niners get Blake Fisher, Notre Dame right tackle. Sounds a little familiar. Uh, definitely a lot different than Mike McGlinchey though, uh, who they lost last off season. Uh, but could use a, uh, and there's talk about Fisher playing guard and they have Aaron Banks from Notre Dame. He plays guard. So kind of got some versatility there perhaps. And Roger Rosengarten is a very good pass protecting tackle, not super physical, um, but a good option for the chiefs there at 64. Um, I feel like we are missing some here where we missed the whole, or where do I have the bucks? Yeah, we're we're missing the apologize. The graphics guy left it out. The Bucks took Junior Colson in this, so one spot we're missing, fifty seven, so I apologize again, but would have to remake all these and then do it all again. But the Bucks I had taken Junior Colson, a uh, linebacker from Michigan, who I do think the Bucks could be looking they could even take a linebacker in the first round, actually. It would be a surprise because they have a couple guys that'll start, but Levante David's not going to be there forever. I think it's kind of coming even though he doesn't look like it's coming in based on his play, I think it could be uh, kind of coming to you know closer to to uh, an end of his career here. So again, I apologize to the Bucks fans. The Bucks I had taking Junior Colson, the Michigan linebacker, who's been getting some buzz there. But um, that will be it for my final mock. And they'll probably I always do this. I say it's a final mock on Monday, and then I'm doing a final final mock. And sometimes it's on Twitter only because it's the day of the draft, and we're trying to get ready there. So join us for all of our content a load of it coming even that live stream uh follow us on twitter as well very important it's gonna do it for this one thanks for watching goodbye